Hello and welcome my friends back at Worlds back with Matt versus PSG it's going to be great the winner qualifies directly to the play in stage and uh, plays with some of the big boys right and uh, yeah the loser still has some chances right so yeah it's not all lost anyway let's get into the draft let's get into it so we see uh, yeah no Sundra ban my pick hims man they're uh, not improving. Um, we see Cassante band, so that also doesn't help. Hi. Uh, well, let's just hope that the Swiss stage players uh, they know what's good. They know what's good. We have the scanner. Um, I think one of the rare times it comes through, uh, often banned. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I should have picked up on that. Regardless, that we have the monkey as a response to scanner. Okay. I I have no idea why people are suddenly prioritizing the monkey king here. Um, sure, if like Jinx or something like that is picked, then like maybe you want to attack an immobile lady carry or something. But like blind picking it into like just the scanner, so I don't know. Uh, it's okay, it's okay, right? It's not as hard of a commitment into AD junglers like a Viego would be, and I'm not the biggest Viego fan anyway, so that's that. So it's okay, but like, what's what about I don't know Sinjao or something like that, right? If you want to go in for a bit more of an aggressive pick, attacking the um, attacking the scanner, right? But whatever, whatever. I mean, it's not that the Wukong looked bad in the last couple of days. So yeah, again, we will see the Ash high priority pick. The champion is insane, and the higher the level of play goes, the better Ash becomes. So just makes sense that she's so high priority in pro play. We have Zix and Renekton on the other side. Yeah, Renekton, <laughs> safe, uh, safe, powerful top laner, Uga Booga. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, I mean, Zix didn't get nerfed really. Like only turret damage nerfed. Like who the fuck cares, right? Uh, that's not the reason why we pick Jix. Uh, Jix, Zix, <laughs> whatever. I, I mean, it's it's part of the reason why you pick it. Uh, actually, let's listen to the cast. Maybe they have some smart intel for me. But uh, if, yeah, hopefully the audio is correct, man. Cast is always so so shy. They're always so quiet in my audios. Whatever. So Zix obviously, uh, yeah, still very go good. Still can swap. Sure, you don't deal damage to the top lane turrets anymore, so you don't have that. But that's just a small little extra, right? You're not losing gold on on top of that. And so on and so on. Other benefits, we've talked about it. Regardless, uh, Renekton obviously is like, yeah, you just ask for uh, to be counterpicked. And then we see a uh, blind Akali. Yeah, just sure. Maple pulled up an uh, Akali Masterclass. If you want to see it, check out my channel. And uh, yeah, he performed well with the new AP items. And that's that. We see support bands on the right side and top lane bands on the other side. And Udyr comes through. Obviously, Udyr Wukong, you have a bit of a flex going on there in the top lane department. But uh, yeah, Udyr and Skana are uh, some of the like hidden power picks on this uh, on this patch i would say there's also uh, again sinjao and there's also uh, the warwick um which i don't think are going to be like going to be picked up but just saying it there are some other like top lane uh, jungle flex picks um that will like tear your face off if you uh, let them right they're also surprisingly tanky and so on and so on anyway they flex the next one into the mid lane huge surprise um, Renekton mid lane is something that mid laners should have practiced uh, at this, uh, for this patch for, for Worlds uh, due to the prevalence of Yon, which I mean he's not picked or banned in this game for some reason. But let's not focus on that, right? So that's the reason why Renekton mid is like uh, something that should be on people's radar to some extent. But uh, regardless, let's see. Um, then we have the Udyr versus the Camille. I still think that's like fine. Obviously, Camille versus Tank always sounds like great. But uh, yeah, Udyr is again surprisingly strong if uh, if he gets to farm. And I mean, hey, Udyr versus the other four champions still looking good. Sure, Rel has the uh, shield destruction effect, which Rel, that can work quite good. But that's kind of about it. You have a very good frost uh, bot lane. That uh, like can play defensive, and then you have, uh, yeah, all kinds of uh, crazy things, right? Um, PSG they can play aggressive, right? They can play pick. Sure, Prom doesn't love that too much going forward, but uh, it's going to be all right. 
and they can always also uh, just lean backwards and like stand their ground, kite back, and then uh, look for Akali to find a flank while the other team is over committing into them. Uh, so PSG's comp, like if played correctly, yeah, can have uh, like various modes. They also have like some like comeback mechanics, right? With Udia in the sideline, with the pick potential uh, oh, that the Ash offers, and then you also have like some team fight ultimates with the Braum and the uh, and the Vukong. It's not all like S tier perfect, right? But this is a comp that can fit into different modes, um, so that's good enough. That's that that flexibility, that versatility is always great enough. Um, now there's always uh, the question, do you want to go like hard commit into one thing or do you want to be the jack of all trades? So uh, that's obviously uh, like a question. Another question for Matt's comp because they are like relatively similar. Uh, they have like Uga Booga Zack Zack champions in four roles and then a long range AD carry that can follow up from the different screens. Yeah, what is this? Global power ranking, 20 versus 25. So, how is, wait, how is PSG only 20? Right? You have like all the LCK teams and like most of the LPL teams, right? Okay, not all LCK and not all LPL, but you have like most of these teams. And then you may have G2 above them. That should not be like 20th, right? Hey, ghosting to lane. Great. All the boomers will know that one. But yeah, okay, so we're not swapping away on Matt's side, which is interesting, but um, yeah, regardless, regardless um, with standard lanes, again, we have a Zix and bot lane, that means, well, not much should happen here, and uh, yeah, in top lane, this is what you can expect. Udyr just uh, Uga Booga Zack Zack pushes every wave and you can't match this wave clear like at all. There are very few champions who can even attempt to do so. Okay, so it's six minutes. You know what that means. Everyone rotates over for grubs. Oh, Junya fucks up the W. Or rather, yeah, whatever. His team is a bit slow. They get one. Betty kinda there on the side, already a bit chunk, but should be able to get some Ws. And Maple gets his seed, but not for long. Oh, he will flash into Alvaro's face, but uh, yeah, the Rel will be traded back. Woody, they're also very low. Ay, ay, ay. PSG fucks this up so poorly, man. Three people dead. So many summoner spells expended. Matt doesn't like Matt uses one single flash. PSG fucks it up so bad. They are the ones starting the grubs, which okay, it's like that doesn't mean anything initially. But hey, bro, like your team is late on the rotation. Super can cheat, right? Because uh, he cleared one more went bot than TP's top. But still, look at this. I mean, we are already late to the play, right? Like, yeah, yeah, true. Thank you, Kasakun. Like, what? The Renekton isn't even here yet. They're losing 4v5 because they, like, go in one by one, by one, by one. Ay, ay, ay. Like, they probably... S I, so my assumption is they saw the Zix bot Right, not reset and like push in another wave, and they probably assumed so. Okay, yeah, they're going to not contest grubs early, which is like a fair assumption, right? The problem is, hey, my friends, there's a TP on super, right? It's 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 very much fucked right now. It's only 1k down, and they they picked up one of the grubbers, so that's at least something. But like all the laning advantages that they accrued are gone, right? Look at top lane, 10 CS lead, great. Camille has one kill, two assists. Jungle, CS lead, three assists. Fuck you. I like bot lane, sure it's now uh, equalized, uh, but Ash has a wave there, uh, which is freezing, right? So bot lane, there was a CS lead. Now a kill and a assist for the Zix, and support doesn't matter, but that's just, uh, yeah, great fun, great fun. What is Aja doing? Like, bro, ult into ult, like, it's still Udyr, right? But Merwin has another E, no? No, they're all flashing in? What are they doing? 
Maple, 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 W. There's the slow. Unfortunate. But uh, yeah, Aje, first of all, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Your jungler is like doing the dragon. You have to expect, especially with Scuttlecrab top up, that the, the jungler is right there. You have to expect that. But hey, Udyr OP, right? Nice movement, I guess, and so on and so on. What do you want to say? Gets them double flash. And uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Anyway, Maple here with the TP. Next line of grubs, you know what it means. Hey. Okay, they engage onto the Braum. That seems pretty stupid. Let's see, Aja is just chasing uh, Super away from the fight. Looks so good, even though double ult for the Skarnar. But there's no damage, no follow up. Right, overall this comp is very, uh, I mean it's not that they don't have any damage, but they don't have traditional damage, right? Their damage is super, which okay, that's uh, an artillery mage. And then it's like three bruisers digging around the top side, which I mean, I guess like the Skana is also a bit more tanky, but yeah, this is very in. Like for Skawi, what the fuck are you doing? Engaging onto a tank prom, you are ridiculous. And uh, yeah, this is just like Aja is probably doing so much damage here with his AoE stuff. And oh yeah, Super gets uh, like chased out of the fight, right? Uses his W and then he just walks back in and just gets insta killed. Uh, very unsmart, let's just call it that. Anyway, big, big oh, PSG. By the way, we, we are pro PSG here, even though European and so on and so on. Uh, PSG is also European, so take, take, take that, haters. Uh, so Harold being uh, traded for a bot lane turret. Um, oh, actually, that turret is not gonna die. Okay, then this trade-off is pretty poor. I mean, they again they take pick up the dragon and it's the second one, but with Hextech and Infernal being your first two dragons, it's a bit rough. Actually, Molten Soul would go giga hard. PSG comp with Molten Soul. Oh, okay. Actually, both comps with Mountain Soul is pretty much GG. If any one of them, like even if Matt gets three Mountain Dragons, oof, right? Oof. Okay, super here caught. They they try to do a Herald play, but it's just going to be oh, that was good damage. But yeah, that's that. And now for Scowy, the next one on the chopping block, they pick up the kill and the Herald like does his work, but. Hey, it's two deaths. Super also flashed. It's GG. GG for them. Oh, Maple has found Merwin. And Aja is also here for the assist. Yeah, I mean, Aja is just really there for the assist. Maple finds the 1v1 against the top laner of Matt. And uh, yeah, as expected, Matt looks shaky, looks not that good when they don't get gifted thousands and thousands of gold. But okay, I hold my I hold myself back a bit more with the fraud um, comments, right? Um, I'm just going to wait a bit more, right? I think it's pretty, uh, like I think everyone, anyone who has watched a single video of mine in the last couple of uh, days would know how my uh, how my view on Matt is, right? Okay, yeah. Matt sets up so Dragon, and again I mentioned it, Mountain Drake is Omega OP in this game, right? With so many beefy boys, it's insane, right? Super Betty Maple, like the only like damage champions really, like they already have a tough job ahead of them, but uh, yeah, with Mountain Dragons it's going to be tough. Let's see, oh Yunja already used the ult on the side, Aja is also getting attacked, oh they get the combo onto Woody, he flashes in, but Maple may have found here some angle, oh it's going to be tough, but the CC is strong! Is it a predict or is it just random? Regardless, Super and Woody managed to fight off Maple and PSG kinda overforce, but here we see the idea of Matt's comp, right? It's a very uh, standard idea of we scan old, hold someone in place and then we put the big circle on top of him. Oh, such a big value old for Super. Aye, aye, aye. And here Ma Maple, right, he gets the E onto Alvaroff, gets stunned and then yeah. Like, I don't know, like, this build, what uh, Ash is going for, I like it, right? It's a very strong build if you want to have, like, if you want to one-shot squishies, right? But that's just, 
Is that is that what is that the vision? We are one shotting uh, squishies here. Oh, he hits another E, but dashing in, like there are just five people. Yunja at least sets up some turbulence here, but they're just overcommitting again and again. What the hell are they doing? Look at this, right? They had like the board here was just recently said they have no vision whatsoever in this area, and they're committing like their dashes forward. It's like, what are you guys doing? Betty is not here. It's like, if it's just a 2v2, okay, fine. But you don't know if it's just a 2v2. Oh my fucking god. I mean, sure, Maple's, uh, what is it, old or something? Or was it the something got interrupted, which uh, led to first Gowie leaving, uh, living. Like, look at this. It's like, Woody just walks around, but they didn't know that everyone was there. And sure, um, what's the same? TP is in? So that's that, but okay. Maybe now Matt has overcommitted here. It looks very sus, and yep, there's Alvarov. Dies. There's the next one. Ilya tries to go over the wall. He gets a three-man old. Maybe he sets it up all greatly for Frescawi, but I'm not too sure about this one. Merwin here has to. Flash dash away and Elioya, no old, no nothing left in the tank. And again, here we see the problem with the Ash build, right? It takes so long. Why the fuck did you go for the squishy destroyer build? Why the fuck are you not going a fucking Blade of the Rune King, Lord Dominics, and all these items? Where are your real items, man? And oh my, Aja gets cooked. How little magic resistance does he have? Maple, why are you going over the wall? What are they doing? What are they doing? Oh my god, PSG man. You should not take lessons from Hunger Thieves on how to play League of Legends. What the fuck? It's so bad, it's so bad. But this is big gold for Mats, right? They will be able to uh, extend the gold lead here quite a bit. Like, ay, 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 like mad over force. Like they have Baron buff, they have everything set up. Hey, let's like, uh, like here, Alvorov and Super decide to go in to be uh, X, right? And I mean, Frescao is there on the side, but it's a fucking Renekton. Like, what the hell does that guy offer? And like all the all this fighting here, it's fine, it's fine, right? Sure, Maple misses E, that's a bit sus, right? Why go for long, uh, long max range E? It's typical Akali stuff. Well, you and I, we both do that as well. Um, so that's that. And then over chase. Look at look at this top laner, Ajit. Like you only have like what's that, 50 magic resist or something from the uh, from the uh, Jack show? Is it 50? Well, whatever it is, right? You, you don't have enough. Look at Zix. He has six. He's six two and six. Sure, he wasn't six two and six before this, but like that guy was already strong. Like, eh? You he melts you. Whatever, whatever. Five thousand gold deficit now for PSG, and yeah, there's a big gold lead now for the Camille, right? Picking up a lot of kills, picking up well, turret gold, right? That's the big difference here for PSG, right? If they win a fight and pick up some of the turrets that are left standing in the side lanes or wherever, right? The gold will swing back, but uh, the turrets are far, far away from them right now. The game is just in such a fucked state, right? Uh, it has calmed down, right? The, probably the last cut you saw in this video was like 10 minutes, 20 minutes ago. Nothing is happening, right? They're just uh, setting up wards. No one is losing their minds anymore. We're just uh, pushing in waves, setting up wards and playing around Baron. Uh, nice to see at least that being like attempted to do properly. But it's obviously tough, right? One team can cheat vision with the Ash and the other one is 6,000 plus gold ahead. Um, but yeah, at this point, I just want to highlight it once more. What the fuck is this Ash build? It's going to do zero damage. It's zero damage. Like, sure, Static Shift is an insane item. It does so much damage. And all these items are great on Ash. But look at the enemy team. Look at the enemy team. It's not going to do any relevant damage here. Okay, now PSG, they're being kind of baited into the next area. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I think the game is kind of over here at this point. Um, PSG fell behind, the uh, the other team is allowed to stack mountain drakes. And again, look at this inventory, not really any resistances yet, but they're melee champions, 
right? At least four of them. So their base resistances are already elevated or higher in comparison to, I don't know, standard range champions, right? And okay, there's the first resistance item for the top lane bruisers. There it is. The Abyssal Mask, right? Setting up Super to do even more damage. And I think this game could have looked so good for PSG, but uh, I don't know, like, Aje with his items, he's going for the like more tanky build, but yeah, look how tanky he is. Not really. Let's just see. So, uh, old Flash, Betty, all the way over there, and I think this will just be the end of game number one. Um, yeah. Very rough, very rough. Um, well done, uh, final fight. It's a bit uh, of like hitting you uh, guys with the wallet, right? With the stats. It's, uh, yeah. But wait, with all the critics criticism that it's warranted for this game for both sides, um, Matt at least didn't throw that much, right? In comparison to uh, what is it? Like their earlier series, or in comparison to Hungry Thieves. So at least that's good for them. They need just one more game to go to Swiss stage. Let's see if they can make it in game number two. Okay, we're here now obviously in game number two. Uh, let's just see, let's just see. Can Matt pull off the upset, right? Upset, yes, yes, I know. Billy Billy boys, I, I, I know, I know. Rub your belly, yeah, yeah, you're all cool. But uh, Matt is not the favorite in this matchup, to be honest. Like, even Riot Games official power ranking places Matt, like, below PSG. Just saying. Anyway, banned. Well, we see Skana banned, and now as everyone is like, oh, this is why Skana is banned, he's so OP. Skana's pretty good, but I mean, hey, if uh, both uh, bot laners would know how to itemize, this game could have been, uh, yeah, a bit different, right? Betty with the absolutely zero anti-tank items, and on the other side, I mean, uh, sure, Super, like, was 20 and uh, 0, had all the items, the damage, but why the hell do you go Ludens in such a game, right? Sure, there are like two squishies on the enemy team, right? The Akali and the uh, Ash, but like that's like it's not like Ludens uh, like uh, is necessary, right? You can still go for the burn items, uh, which like do more damage in any case, right? It's just you do less damage, but you get the burst. Or you deal more damage but don't have the burst. And you don't need to burst one shot the ash, right? It's like, what? Regardless, regardless, we are here in game number two. Let's talk about that. First pick Vi, of course, yeah. Matt for the first time at Worlds so far. Uh, not on blue side, so uh, let's see how they play around that. So we have first pick Vi answered by Viego and then blind pick top lane Renekton. Sure, sure, sure. And then we have Misfortune. Yeah, just pick Misfortune. Uh, Zix, is Zix is available, by the way, and you elect to go for Misfortune. Uh, yeah, and the enemy team already has two AD champions, right? Um, and the, they pick Ezreal. Oh, what are they doing? What is, what, what is happening here in this draft? And there's Nar. Hey my god, it's, it's a, it's a draft, uh, let's just not question, like, let's just not question it. I, what the hell is this? So much, like, potential being wasted, right? You could look for counter picks, you could look for combinations, but no, let's just, like, I don't know. V I mean, the Viego pick, at least, okay, yeah, individually it's good against uh, Vi, but I don't like Viego anyway, so that's that. That's the only thing where it's like, okay, like, why slap blind pick Renekton there? Sure, it's like they said, oh, we can flex Renekton in mid lane as well. Yeah, cool. Rub your belly. Uh, who the fuck cares? I, yeah, yeah. Like, if you pick Renekton, Viego, you're already locked into, like, such a forced side of composition, right? And, like, sure, the enemy team has Vi and could, like, handshake a Booga Booga game, right? Just like game number one. But they could also pivot away from it and have just the Vi as like a, a flex spot. Oh, yeah. uh, let's just not question it. We see mid lane bans. We see su support bans, I assume. Nico, uh, a champion that's very good right now, but people just don't want to play it. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to have fucking Renekton Nar. We're going to have Vi versus Viego. We're going to have Ezreal versus Misfortune. 
for the champion. I, I, I just, like, why, man? Like, none of these champions are, like, really all that great right now. Like, it's just, hey, let's pick comfort, right? Let's pick champions that exist. Oh my god, man. It's like, none of these champions had, like, po positive things going for them. Or, like, po relevant things going for them, right? There are so many champions in the game that would destroy any of these in their own roles. But, whatever. And we pick Leona, and then we pick Rel, right? Why the hell do we pick uh, Leona here, not Rel? Isn't Rel a bit better with Misfortune? I mean, obviously, you know Leona, I like it, right? The old is OP, but hey. Uh, Ezreal, Rel, interesting. But yeah, so Matt, they uh, play a comp that uh, we have three people going in, and these other people here stand aside and like throw shit at you. Uh, we have some range, but not too much. And the other comp is like, hey, we play solo queue, we make picks happen, we have push lanes and something something. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just so annoyed. I, I mean, obviously it's clear that people at Worlds are just going to go whatever the hell, right? It has always been that way, but it's like... N not even a single like like try uh, of being like, creative. Not even trying to get an edge in the draft by looking at champions that I don't know may have better matchups, may bring something new into the game. Nope, just go for like standard champions, even though they're like C tier level or something. Okay, my friends. Yeah, in the game we are, and um, do we see it? Um. We have another day of jungler not buying jungle item. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so amazing. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Guys, get the clips ready. Get it ready. Let's watch the reaction. Oh my god. EU, is that your jungle like star? Okay, he, he noticed, he noticed. He noticed, he noticed. Right? It's not the same as like in past years, right? Where you can't, where it's hard to notice because, uh, well, how would you notice? But um, he picks it up, right? Because you, you don't see the pet. Like, if you don't even see the pet attacking the blue buff, red buff, whatever. Like, yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, talking about the lanes. Hey, top lane. Aja, right? He picks up the Nar. Nar. Oh, he's a ranged champion versus Renekton. Uh, the fact that we see Renekton Nar every fucking year for the last 30 years, it's so disgusting. It's so disgusting. The complacency of top laners, it's it's insane that you don't uh, you, that you aren't willing to play something that's maybe not a fucking same champion. It, it's so maddening. <sighs> and like both of these champions aren't even good. If you ask any solo queue top laner, right? Oh, am I afraid of a Nar? Am I afraid of a Renekton? Sure, like these people will like crush your face because they have like 3,000 games of these champions, right? That's where like some level of like competent competency comes from, right? But hey, really, whatever. He picks up uh, the um, what is it called? The grass, right? Because obviously the fleet nerfs for ranged champions. Very sad, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, no, nothing really else to say. Uh, let's see, like what plays Maple can make. Uh, oh, great, great! Oh man, this is good for words. Look at the Syndra overlay. We see the amount of stacks that she has. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is cool. Uh, yeah, LCK, please make some notes and. Uh, See how they uh, how they do. Anyway, bot lane matchup. What do we expect? Like both people being chilling. Ezreal goes here. Yeah, not much is going to happen. It's going to lose uh, some CS. Obviously, like the kill threat of the uh, MF is uh, quite higher in the early game. Well, Ezreal is safe, but obviously, if someone dies, it's the Ezreal in this lane. Um, I, I would assume. Well, let's not jinx anyone here, right? And then obviously jungle matchup. Uh, Elioya a bit delayed due to like what happened there uh, very early on, but he's still like decently strong enough, right? Just a couple of uh, camps behind here. Bro, Maple, what the fuck are you doing? 
First of all, why you're not playing? Like, obviously Maple is losing, right? Obviously. Um, like, Syndra is a pretty strong champion and all of that. But, like... Oh, and that's the jungle gank. That's why you don't push up all the fucking way when the enemy has the control ward in the top rush. And I mean, they spotted Elioia, right, uh, in bot lane a couple moments ago, but maybe they didn't expect him to be this greedy to stay around all the time. Which is reasonable to assume, right? If this gank doesn't work, Elioia falls down 30 CS or something. So, uh, illegal gameplay gets rewarded, that's what we hate to see. But, yeah. I mean, Woody had flash up, so it's like that's a, di a different topic as well. Like, you should not really die to that gank. Anyway, so, uh, why is Maple losing to Syndra? Well, first of all, Syndra is a good champion. And second of all, Syndra has managed to elect the SKT T1 Syndra skin. Right? Whereas Maple has not elected the T1 uh, skin, right? Uh, sadly, we don't have that. But he has not elected the Hall of Legends Faker, the Eternal God Emperor skin, right? So, obviously, that means you do less damage in comparison to your lane opponent and you take more damage right so that's just the skin difference here another uh, like issue is that a renekton player also has not elected the t1 skin right it's just like why don't you do this like elect the t1 skins do more damage it's just so simple like Jun junjia is just farming he's just farming like he has not done anything yet he's not impacted any lanes and like even though elioia like absolutely inted right he got a free kill, right, which like helped him get items and uh, that helped with like clearing faster. And I mean his clears are in general relatively fast, right, in comparison to, to uh, the uh, to the Vi, right? So like he's getting closer and closer, right, he's just a couple hundred gold uh, ahead, right, obviously due to the kill. But yeah, he's fine. And like top lane, Aja is just, I don't know, hyper respecting this Merwin guy for no reason. Flash ult. Do you have enough damage here? Well, yeah, I guess you have. And uh, yeah, they use everything and find a kill on Frascawi, who is uh, yeah left alone there on the top side, not respecting the Rene uh not Renekton, the Nar. Well, I guess that's why we pick Nar. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, this flash being down by Syndra is exactly. Like, maybe what uh, PSG needs and wants, right? Like, uh, you have not played the game for the first 12 minutes. Like, maybe you can find the R keys on your mid jungle and do something there. No, no, the Renekton is not the target. Uh, you have no wave and... Oh. Yo! Crazy. What is Maple doing? Why is he half HP? Well, they force out the ult. Now it's four people. There's no way they fuck this up. Okay, and Maple gets the kill. But look top lane, look top lane. Betty, uh, he might... This is... Wow, this is very greedy. What the fuck is my guy doing? Force the flash, he gets the ult, channels it. Why does he not channel it fully? But Junjia comes around. Yeah. Um, good flash, I guess, by Betty. He also had the cleanse. So maybe I was worried for nothing. Yeah, probably I was worried for nothing. I was assuming, like, if you want to live here, uh, you should go into the Raptor Pit and ult over the, uh, over the side, because you know the enemy team is in the blue buff area and not in the red buff area, right? Not on that side. It's on the other side, so if you ult from there at the wave, you're going to get the wave, you're going to be safe. But, uh, yeah, he sticked around, got the cannon mi minion, had to sacrifice his flash, but, right, if he ults here, it's going to be A-OK, -okay, right? Maybe super, like, cues him a couple times, but he should be fine. And, yeah, it's just crazy. Very nice, and, yeah, here, Yunjia gets it done. Nice, nice. Okay, Betty in trouble. He gets a one for one, though. He gets a one for one, though. And look at side lanes. They have the Herald for mid lane, so that's that. But, yeah, if they can defend the, the second uh, Herald crash, yep. So they get the extra damage, but that doesn't really matter, right? Um, no, no, Merwin is fine. Oh, wait! They find, who is that guy? Alvarov, and he jumps into Betty's mouth. And, uh, yeah, that's a kill. 
That's Midnight Turret. And look at top, right? RETPs to defend. And the gold lead keeps increasing. Let's go. Another turret, another turret. Increasing the gold lead. But oh, maybe Matt is looking for a fight here. But no. They're not handshaking it. Good. Very nice, right? You don't know all the information, right? You had you had the vision around, but the vision has been pushed back as you like used your tempo for the, for the turret. Now you reset and uh, set up vision control again. And now they just back off and don't do anything. So this is just bad. This is just bad by PSG. Sacrifice bot lane turret. Don't get anything topside besides vision. And then just immediately afterwards recall and don't play around the vision you've just set up. Like you have, like, what are they doing? It's just weird. It's like they just back up. They don't even go base and buy like five items. No, they just go back and I don't know. Hey, we all need to go back and like farm jungle camps or whatever. It's like, that's just so weird. And now it's like they don't have the wards in the inventory again to, uh, to set it up, right? Like Woody as like as uh, like going, uh, Woody going back would have been okay, right? Because like he's the support, he needs to recharge his wards. So that's good to do. But uh, I don't know, man. That was uh, like a missed opportunity. Now look at the map state, right? Look at the control they had just a couple of moments ago, and there's no apparent reason why they would lose it. And yeah, Junjia gets caught here as well. And yeah, he's losing this 1v1 super hard. And let's see, I mean, there's the Nar destroying the turret. They're pinging the Baron, I assume. But uh, okay, he gets the turret. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Maple has TP though. And I mean, they have good Baron damage though. Let's see. I mean, Maple, what the fuck was that? Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. Can Maple. Oh, okay. In melee range, he is barely able to land an ability. Oh, Matt, they have potentially overcooked. Maple might be able to get revenge. Yes, he does. Can they cancel some backs? Can they play around Baron, right? Junjia is sprinting out of base. Okay, Alioya has flash, right? So that's that TP into the mid lane wave. BSG is also relatively low. Can they play it? Maple tries to be the bouncer. PNG says no, we are not risking it. This could have been a massive swing for them, but if they die here, if they lose the Baron, that would have been the game, uh, or at least it would have been a game-defining, game-changing swing. So uh, yeah, they, they calm down. Maple motherfucker, bro, please, man, step it up. Like, if you want to dance with the enemy engaged, okay, but then you need to be able to flash, then you need to be able to sidestep, then you need to be able to hit your fucking E, right? What the hell are they guys doing? Look at the map. You have no vision whatsoever. Where, like, who is behind this, uh, like, Rel? Rel just, like, hex flashes over a wall and you assume that he's caught. Bro. Ay, yeah, yeah. look at this, man. They just give over. Like, they're ahead in gold, but, like, their map play is just so silly because they, like, in the last couple of minutes, they've been just getting caught again and again. And now they sacrifice an inner turret. Let's just see. Um, why the fuck? It's a classic one team is worse than the other. Man, this is I guess what play is about. I need to get into the mojo again of like these teams like will just die again and again and again and they don't know what pathing is and so on and so on. They go through every like hell hole on the map. Like they're like everyone knows. I hope everyone knows, right? Okay, again Molten Soul by the way. Uh, but this game it's less impactful. Uh, but yeah. Dragon, four, Baron, they pick up some kills as well. Like some areas on the map are just illegal to path through. And this is one of them. Let's see, Merwin, can Maple land an E? No, but he gets the flash. Hey, cool for him. Frescawi also TPs, okay. And uh, this might look like an overforce, but maybe it's not. Let's see, Maple with the R as a threat. And Nupfi flashes forward and finally lands the key ability after such a lackluster game. He's finally stepping up and that might be the straw that broke the camel's back or in this case the lion's back. They don't have a wave in relevant uh, proximity. They really, Woody needs to tank the mystic shots here. He needs to tank the mystic shots. Oh, okay, just force it. 
Okay, they're not looking for an end angle. Maybe it would have been a bit too risky, but um, hey, Stundra dead, right? Mm, whatever. So, what is PSG's plan? They don't have TP onto Aje, so they need to swap their assignment, put Maple into bot lane, and put Aje uh, with a team. Sure, Maple works a bit better, right, in creating picks, but that way you can have, like, the, the super minions be a realistic threat. If no one has all the time and all the chill in the world and can just clear them like all the way there, like they're buying illegal time that they should not have. Right? But imagine if there was uh, an Ari standing in their face. What the fuck? That's how Maple uses his TP? What the hell? I mean, PSG now brute force them away. But they're not gaining anything. Maple just wastes his fucking TP. That was such a vital asset for their Baron setup. PSG, do the Baron or do something! The, the fucking thingy majingy is like respawning in the mid, and if you let allow Renekton to clear the fucking super minions like all the way out of his base, like they don't even exist at that point. They're just funneling gold into the Renekton. Right? They are grouping as five. They're wasting time. Sure, I know your Baron damage is not great. Then play for the turn, right? Then play for something. Play for the map. Now they get the TP of the Renekton, but it just doesn't fucking matter because you're not getting that much more minions of, uh, like, waves of super minions. Anyway, Betty gets a massive ult and one-shots that motherfucker. Super forced to flash away, and now the type, the fight is split. Frescaui and Super not finding access for now. Good scatter, but it's too late. His teammates are already slain. And ooh, Maple again flashes forward with the charm, forces out the stopwatch, and that is going to be it. The R is being pressed, and Betty's KDA again is ruined, but Arge is already working away on uh, the top side. And that's going to be it. PSG forces game number three. Ah, yeah, yeah, the people are calming down a bit, but uh, like once these fights start, people still lose their minds. Anyway, Matt had an okay game, like again. I'm saying it, they look better than I expected by a long shot, but uh, yeah, let's just see how it all turns out in game number three. Okay, so uh, in the draft in game number three, Aurora first pick, okay, we're, a bit, uh, we're still a bit learning about this champion and its potential, right? We obviously see the ult is strong and against melee champions in the top lane, she can be annoying, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Ezreal vs Misfortune, another game of that, and hey, there is Aurora, there is Jarvan, Betty, man, your KDA will be yeah, attacked again and again, poor dude. Hey, they get Skarner though, so that's something, and Maple again continues with his AP Assassins, right? Sure, if you look at the item changes, AP Assassins are kind of the ones benefiting the most from uh, the buffs to Storm Search especially, so we get it, right? We get it, and they are two squishy motherfuckers on the enemy squad, so uh, it makes sense, right? Um, regardless, we have support bands and top lane bands on one side, as you kind of expect, right? Uh, well, not really, right? One is prepping for R4, and the other one is protecting their B1. Um, and we have Alistair versus Leona. Uh, yeah. Didn't I pick Alistair as like the champion with the most deaths? So far, I think we have not seen enough Alistair here. I just assume, right, if Alistair is in the meta, Alistair dies a lot, and... Oh my god, another Vex. Quit, you are just now praying for the biggest downfall of Mad Lions ever in your life, right? Because if fucking random ass fresh Gowie boy uh, performs better on Vex than, uh, than you, then Jesus, man. You're not going to uh, defeat the allegations, man. I mean, 1-8 one eight or whatever it was is already bad enough, but that's that. Anyway, hey, uh, top lane cocky, so so that's something. I mean, there are the ranged top lane bands, right? But it's like, no Jace? Is Jace really that unplayable? I, I heard some people say Jace is in, like maybe back in the meta, but... Okay. Obviously Jace in like any like swap situation is going to be terrible, but hey. Anyway, so PSG picked three mighty fine lanes for them. Eyes are on the mid lane matchup. And let's see how the Skarner can impact this, right? Uh, pretty aggressive comp, sure they have some scaling elements to it. 
but uh, yeah, Skarna not really known as an early game jungler to com uh, accompany that. Okay, we're coming into the game and the story is simple. Um, there are like there are DPS champions, right? But there are three AP assassins to some extent, right? So we will ha we'll have to see, right? If if one of these falls behind, we have seen it often. They just invisible, right? Stacking magic resistance is going to be uh, the name of the game, right? Um, especially for PSG, right? With uh, the double AP solo laners from Matt, both of them are pretty burst reliant. So like any magic resistance in that de department is just going to be amazing. We're, we'll have to see how this mid lane matchup goes, right? Frescawi was not Frescawi. Quid was doing all right till the gang started coming in. And that's not something that's going to happen this time because there's a fucking Skarner in the game. Uh, he's not doing anything crazy. And yeah, here we see Arjay doing super well. That's the thing we already saw with the uh, flex of the Aur uh, Aurora into the mid lane also by Quid. Um, sure, it's a ranged champion uh, that can bu bully top laners, melee top laners, but like her stat profile is not insane. Look at her HP bar. She just got cute or something. Yeah, cute. Like she's cooked. Junjia is already here, and let's see. Maybe they cannot flash. No, he just flashes onto his face. He doesn't have the turret aggro. He still dies. F for the scanner. But look at the wave, man. He is missing quite a bit. And yeah, Hex Drinker first coming in by Aja, and then the question is like, how does Merwin even do anything unless Alioya comes back top lane and does something cool for uh, for for his uh, bunny girl there? Uh, it's just going to be a horror, right? Like we saw it in the Aurora versus Oriana matchup, which obviously is a like, different, but it's the, it's the same prospect. The champion, like the range, is not massive. The attack speed. Wind up is not super fast, right? It's not a champion where you can just bomb, trade here, step back, right? Sure, the movement speed is good, but this champion is. Uh, it's, it's, it's not what people make it out to be. It's an ult bot, really. Uh, that is like slippery. That's that's about it, right? The laning phase can be good, again, against like melee tanks or some shit like that. So, uh, yeah, let's just see. Oh, he flashes forward, Woody. Well, it's a flash for flash trade, so that's something, but uh, yeah, generating some pressure in the bot lane. Let's see, let's see. The unseen Leona is the deadliest. Let's see, he has flash. He just goes in. He tries to go over the wall, but there is Junjia. And hey, Merwin, stand proud, you cooked, but. <laughs> The three men top lane experience, man, I love it. I hate it. I, I hate it so much. But yeah, uh, six minutes. You know what that means? It's grubber time. Let's just see. Aji gets to push out the wave. Super probably has no interest in freezing that or anything. Um, so yeah, they're going to get the grubbers right, and uh, PSG should look for uh, what is it? The dragon in, 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 uh, instead, right? It's a cloud drake. Hey, let's go. Um, but yeah, also pretty simple. Right, you just made a play, you are Oom, you use your resources, don't fight for anything stupid, just take care of the dragon. Oh, they don't want to, they want to dive Merwin again. They don't see Alvarov, so they call it off. And that costs them some time. Good good drifting by Junjia. I trust him to drive my Rift Herald, if it comes to it. But yeah, let's see, is he going for the dragon? No, okay, they're setting up with the, the crap beforehand. And super here. Aji flashes the Q and just shoots him down. That's it. Pew, 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 pew. That's the PSG power that we want to see. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Okay, next grabs. You know what that means. Let's have a random 5v5 at 11 minutes. This time, Matt is being a bit respectful, right? Uh, they probably feel more behind than they are, I assume. But, uh, yeah. I mean, there's also no real reason to force a fight here for them, right? They have the Vex in the side lane, picking up a plate here, maybe even two. Right, both teams with the three grubs. Sadly, the Cloud Drake has not been slain yet, but uh, I trust uh, I trust in uh, the teams that they will do it. I think Junjia showed there. Yeah, 
he stepped out of the brush for some reason. So, uh, will Arju get the... yeah, Arju gets the turret plate, so that's at least something. And in the bot lane, Frescao, he managed to pick up two. Good for him, good for him. And yeah, the gold, more or less even here. Doesn't really matter, right? Okay, Cloud Drake being slain here, very nice. A bit more of a reserved game after the first couple of kills. And uh, yeah, that's good for PSG, I would say. I I think their scaling is just be better. Sure, the team fighting can be a bit tricky, right? But they have the tools and they don't even need to. They can play a really nice 4 1, right? St uh, Betty and Arjun standing behind uh, Woody and Junja. And uh, yeah, just have the LeBlanc in the side lane uh, do her thing, right? She's just going to be slippery, just going to be annoying. Like, they get huge value of stacking up, uh, like, magic resistance um, due to the burst. And, I mean, Ezra sure is an AD carry, but yeah, some AP in his kit. And, uh, yeah, first blood turret will go to Maple. Good for him, good for him. And, yeah, PSG, they continue to chill, right? The gold lead, again, increases a bit, but it's nothing really to write home about. But, hey, eh, having a measured game, sure, you would not expect it, but it's good for the LeBlanc comp. Uh, Junjia? Bro, wait, you, you don't have any friends! What is he doing? Like, doesn't get the flash off, doesn't get the ult off. Now Woody is forced to flash away as well. What did he just do? Did they just DM him that they have his family hostage or something? Yo, that's a massive gold swing! They get the kill, they get the assist, they get the flashes, right? They get the charge, and like, Alvaro here, like, he's fine. And yeah, that's just such a like massive gold place from PSG. Okay, Junja gets the ult onto Alvarov. They're hitting over the wall and that should be a dead Alistair any moment now. Gets the flash, but it's not enough. And Super is caught as well. Jumps over the wall, but that's where LeBlanc came from. Gets the fear? Or what the hell was that? Oh my god. Anyway, Super gets the kill. Nice Q there. Predicting Maple to flash over the wall. I assume, right? But Junjia picks it up with a drive-by. Look at top lane. Ouch. The Mercury Treads could have come in and uh, for more people. But so far it's just the one on the Skarner and uh, the one on the Woody, right? I mean, obviously, Betty, if you ever get hit, it's like, yeah, kind of iffy. But uh, just getting, like, just decreasing the fear duration can just be really helpful to get the barrier, to get the flash, to do anything here. And yeah, Alvarov again caught. And uh, this time he ults early, but just not enough. Right, Skarno ult, Woody ult, so many cooldowns used, but they get the pick on the Alistar, which it won't get them Baron, but hey, it's not, it's much needed gold, right? They enjoy that. And uh, it will get them some control there over this top side to maybe threaten another pick to maybe then pounce onto the Baron, right? The Baron damage is relatively low, right? They have two AD carries, but the LeBlanc and these AD carries, they, they need some time. They don't have percent damage or anything like that uh, to some extent. So yeah, both teams still need to calm down. The game is not over yet for any side. Oh my God, Maple get caught. The fear comes in, they follow through, have they overcommitted? It does not look like it yet, they find Frescaui, Arja has joined the fight but it's too late, he gets headbutted in, and PSG just throws the entire game out of the window, oh my fucking god. Unbelievable what just happened there, Maple jumps in, gets CZ chained to death, everyone panics, tries to help up, but it's just not enough, and oh my god, such a big throw by PSG. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, let's see it again. Did I see it correctly? Maple, he has the vision. He gets immediately flash comboed by Alvarov. Jumps back, but the fear connects and that's just it. Sure, they dive in deep, but Aja is not here. Betty doesn't get a good ult. The combination of uh, Skana ult and Misfortune ult just does not work. And Aja gets comboed again. Bro has flashed up. He saves it for the next game. Maybe alongside, uh, what's the uh, what's the guy, Tomo, right? Maybe he uh, wants to have it uh, for the same game or something. But uh, what the fuck is Junjia doing again? Man, these people, I had high in my rankings, they're all inting. Why, man? Quit now, Junjia. Like, what the fuck? I put you guys, like, one and two for the players, uh, for the planes. 
and these guys are just inting it. Jesus Christ, PSG was in such a fine spot, stacking up the magic resistance against this uh, Mad Lions comp, but now, backs against the wall, their base in shambles, and yeah, I just want to fucking uh, hurt myself. What the fuck did I just witness, man? How can you in that hard? Like, they should not copy the homework of Hunger Thieves. But yeah, I mean, big play by Alvarov. I mean, I have to say that, right? We have to uh, mention good things when they when they happen. Sure, PSG losing their minds, like playing silly around. But hey, Alvarov on point, punishing the misposition uh, multiple times here. Uh, a player that I had, like, he was not on, on my radar. He was completely under it. Um, nice combo there by Junjia. That's kind of what you want to see. Uh, yeah, that's... I should just never mention a player's name ever in my life, man. Every time I do, these people, like, their, their fate is sealed. <laughs> they just get fucked. I say, I'm just like, first time ever I say Alvarov does something good, immediately gets cocked by Junjia, who I just flamed. It's like really the reverse of whatever it happens. Anyway, Super here also absolutely fucking inting it. Uh, yeah, they get the flash, they chase him away, they defend their base. Uh, oh, ult? It's not enough, okay. But yeah, Dragon, Baron, they all spawn in 2 to 3 minutes. Uh, so yeah, nothing really to fight over. But that's now a 4000 gold lead for Mant. And sure, the magic resist was coming in for PSG. But I mean, I'm expecting items or penetration to come in from uh, Mad Lions now. Or maybe just the base high AP values that you can afford with this money are good enough. Nope, there is the penetration. Void stuff comes in for Merwin and it's already... Looked at by Frescawi as well. And yeah, the Ezreal is a sole AD, right? Not much insensitive to buy armor on PSG's side. So it's just what it is. There's the Hex Trinker, there's the Maw, and uh, there's the uh, Banshee's Veil, right? So all all cool, all fun. PSG has very, sh very shallow vision, right? Betty has cooldowns. Everyone has cooldowns, really, besides Super. So uh, yeah. A wild fight is on the line. Alvarov getting chunked, right? Dragon has spawned. Baron so as well. Now, there's the Leona ult. Eliolia buffered this. Maybe they find Alvarov again. Junjia gets comboed, flashed away. He gets the old combo, but it, maybe it's not enough. Betty is forced to flash away. There is the big engage from Elioya, and the follow-up is massive. Ajay tries to do something over the wall. Maybe that was a bit too frisky. He has a lot of damage, but maybe it's not enough. Maple gets for Skawi and maybe, oh Ajo, that was not right, right? He gets another W off, insane, but Super is chasing around. Maple actually fell to Super and that's it. Matt beat all expectations and beat down PSG. That is absolutely insane. They, they looked so much better, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's the key members, right? It's not Merwin, it's not Frescaurin. Eloya, Super, Alvarov. These three guys absolutely performing. We expected Super to do well, but his bot lane partner absolutely showed up. And Eloya's in a, like, like we knew he could, it, could do it, right? We knew he could do it, right? If he's on his best, he's really, really good. But that's not the standard for this year. He still performed. We're going to see more games of PSG, right? They're moving down into the uh, uh, like lower qualification match. But Mad Lines, they make it through. EU, hey, maybe they're not cooked immediately. Not that these games were great, but hey, a win is a win. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on more world's content. And see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.